Hello and welcome back. In the last lesson, we started integrating our register form to the API. We crossed some hurdles around cores by setting up a proxy. We've done a successful call initially and some basic error handling. We noticed in the, the last section that the API is returning some very sensitive information, mainly that password hash. And so we need to do the work to, to get back into our API and make sure that we, we're not returning that information. So to do that work, let's just open up our folders here. We need to go to the router in our server and we can switch our terminal just to make sure that we, we've got our node one running. And if we scroll up to this register endpoint, you'll see we do all our error handling here, which is returning the 400s. The last step is the saving the user to the DB, and then it just returns the, the user there. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to just delete some of the, the keys off that user that we're sending back. To do that, I'm just going to kill our API server, and we're going to install a package called Lodash. So it'll be npm install Lodash, hit enter. And once that is saved, Lodash is just gonna give us um, a very useful function that we can use in a moment. So I'm just going to restart our server. We'll say npm run start. I'm, I want to actually do this method in the, the, the models and the, the user file here. So right at the bottom of the page, let's just create a new function that we can reference here. So we'll say async and then, and I'm just gonna call this uh, pass user. It's not going to take in any arguments and what we're going to do is right at the top of this model file I'm going to reference the Lodash library and so we can use some object destructuring here to to reference this method here that I want to use from Lodash which is called clone deep and basically what this is going to do is it's going to give us a way to make a deep clone so that's like all the levels of the object be able to clone that and create a copy so we can set up a try catch block here then I can say let record to create a temporary variable and then we'll say clone deep and then we'll pass in this dot user or we'll just pass in this for that whole user object. Yeah, the API is crashing, but we just need to set up that catch block. And in this case, we can just throw a new error and pass through the error. So once we have a copy of our user object, like that's in the, the current instance of this model, we can then go about deleting different keys off this copy and then return the copy back to the request handler. So very simply, we can use this delete keyword in JavaScript and we can say, or delete record dot, uh, let's see, take a look at our user. The only thing that's gonna be of value to the front end at this stage is maybe the name and email address. So let's delete security band, uh, the ID and created. So we can say delete record security, which is the main one. We wanna delete record dot ID. We wanna delete the record dot created. And then the last one will be delete record dot band. And one more check to see that we are gonna delete security, band, ID, and created. And so once we've deleted those keys off the object, then we can simply just return this record which would be the copy of the current user model after deleting specific keys, and then we return it back. And then in our router, once we've saved the user, let's just create that variable called record, and we'll await, and we can call user.passUser. That doesn't take in any arguments, but once we have that record, it should be an object that's returned with the correct uh, values. So instead of passing through the user, we can pass back that record. And so before we do this in the front end, just to validate that the back end's working, let's head on over to Postman. Uh, and in the, the register endpoint, we can just send that through. And it does look like everything is working correctly. And you can see we now only are getting the, the name and the email back. And that's looking much better. Uh, we've done the work in our API, so we can just uh, exit out of there. And we can head on back to our front end. And we can do one more test on our front end, so we can set up another test there and we're going to do John our famous John that we've been testing with and then we're going to hit this register endpoint we hit our debugger and it looks like it was a successful request which is good news in the payload we're sending through those values in the response you can see we're getting a request that is looking much better and so now that we have that fixed we can continue with our work to implement the success case in our our try catch block of our register form let's just take a step back and think about what we want to do here if the user has been registered correctly from the api's point of view it's returning us a name and an email address at this stage the user once they've registered they probably want to log in or like go to the application so we want to route the user back to the login page 
And I think it will be a good user experience to maybe automatically pass on the email address and pre-populate the login field with that email address that was received from the API. So let's start doing the work to, to get this up and running. I think the first thing we need to do is let's grab a hold of the email and the name properties from the response. So the way we do that is, again, we'll just use await and then reference the response and then we'll make use of that JSON method. We could do something as simple as say window.location.href and then we can just send the user back to the index.html page. And because we want that user's email address to be passed back to the login page, we can make use of a query parameter here in the, the URL. And so at the end of index.html, we can use the question mark for to denote a query parameter and we can just use this email key and then we're going to assign this to the value of of whatever email is being passed through here so we're going to need to make use of string interpolation and i can then inject the email that's coming through here and because that email is going to have that at sign we actually need to encode this component so we'll use this method encode uri component that's available to us in javascript and let me just give us a little bit more space or close the Explorer so we can see what we're doing. So in theory, once we have a successful response, we're sending through the user to the index.html page with this email in the query parameters of the, the URL. So let's test this out. Let's go ahead and submit our form once again. If I hit register now, we're going to hit our breakpoint. You'll see that we do indeed get logged back to our login page. And you'll see in the query parameter, we have this key of email with encoded value of the actual email that was received back from the response. That's working well so far. And the next thing we need to do is just receive that response in, in this form and then just append it in. So at this stage, we don't even have a JavaScript file for our index.html file. So let's take a short break here. We'll pick this work up in the next lesson. See you on over there. Cheers for now.